In this video, we're going to take a look at creating valid profiles with our two-dimensional sketches. We've actually covered a lot of sketching commands in this course. Now, what we need to really look at is what makes a valid profile and some of the nuances around how Inventor reads profile geometry. Here inside of a new part file, I'm going to begin with a two-point center rectangle and build that around my origin. I'm also going to create a circle and put this up here in the upper right. And for the time being, I'll also create a circle over here. When I start connecting some of my geometries, I have to be aware of how my profiles are going to be built, paying close attention to how my constraints are being built on my geometry so that I don't inadvertently create something where I have a hanging piece of geometry left over or something isn't quite closed up. These are things you have to watch out for so that you can create successful, valid profiles. So here at these two circles, I kind of like to create a cam shape where I have a line connected down to here with tangency and a tangency connected from here to that circle as well. So when I start my line command, if I simply just click up here and click down here without paying too much attention, afterwards I can see a tangent was created on this right-hand side, but not the left-hand side. That's a visual indicator that I didn't get my tangency on the first side. When I observe this from afar, it looks like it is tangent. So when I zoom in, there's got to be more to the story. And of course there is. There's a little bit of a overlap here of the circle and the line. This would create a bad profile. It would not create the curvature that I've intended for this design. So what I could do is go back and apply tangency after the fact. But this you'll have to be diligent about to make sure that you are connecting both sides accordingly. I'm going to do another line down here in the bottom. This time I'm going to use a little bit of a sketching trick. I'm going to click and hold on the curvature of this circle. That creates a tangency there for me at the beginning of the circle. And then when I go to the other circle, I will wait till I see the tangency there as well, and then release my mouse. And there I can see I have tangent on both sides. If you're not good at that trick, let me delete this line up here, you could just exaggerate the problem. So here I'll create a line, and I will connect it to these two circles to make sure it is touching, and then create tangency between them after the fact. It's worth noting that as you're drawing lines, sometimes you could draw something that's tangent, but not necessarily connected. So this line is tangent to both circles, however it is not touching. This would be a good use of the extend command now, to extend it up to the circle and to the left to the circle as well. I'm going to erase these geometries here and talk about this interaction I have between the rectangle and the circle. If I were going to extrude these profiles, I would actually only have two profiles here. And a profile is defined, again, by a fully closed boundary, a fully closed loop. Here I have a fully closed loop of a circle, and I have a fully closed loop of a rectangle. However, it looks like I might have kind of a pie shape right here, but I really don't, because these lines are crossing over top of each other. So how do I create a separate profile for this little tiny wedge right here? I could use the split command and split these into separate segments. The problem with that is I have more geometries to constrain or dimension. I'd actually like to trick Inventor a little bit, and to do that, I will use the point command. So I'll choose a point tool here, and put a point tool here as well, at those intersections. Now if I were going to extrude this profile, it would now see this as three separate profiles, but it has a termination point. It sees that point as an end. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my 2D sketch by right-clicking there. If I start my extrude command, I can see one profile, two profiles, and three profiles. If I move backwards before I create those points, just doing some undos here, and then try that same extrusion, I only get the two profiles. So what we saw here were some nice little tricks to help us make sure that we have closed profiles. And also, in order to help us sketch a little bit better, we saw a look at how to work with the curvature of a line as we pull it off a circle. And all in all, we're trying to create nice, valid profiles that don't necessarily overlap each other or don't have gaps in them. 
because there will be nothing more frustrating as you're learning the software that when you try to go to create an extrusion or a revolve, a sweep, a loft, any one of your feature-based tools, that you can't get your profile selected because there's something wrong with the sketch.